Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here and today we find ourselves going all over the United States visiting many of the national parks. You'll be visiting some of the smaller parks, but also some of the major parks. Having won a Mensa Select Award, Trekking the National Parks is an award-winning family board game that celebrates these national parks in a fun and competitive way. Players will be competing for points by claiming park cards, which symbolizes experiencing the wonders at each of these magnificent landscapes. You'll also gain points by collecting trail stones as you travel across the map. Trekking the National Parks is for 2 to 5 players, takes 30 to 60 minutes to play, and is for ages 10 and up. I'm going to show you how this new second edition of the game works, which has streamlined some of the mechanisms and even made it easier to learn, but actually has added more depth to the game. Then I'll see you on the other side. One thing I've always loved about this game is the story behind it that the designer's parents made a goal to go to every national parks and the designer himself, Charlie Bink, also joined them on some of those trips and that story is on the inside of the box and I love that personal touch. Over the course of the game, players are going to be moving around the country, going into different parks and trying to experience those parks to get points. Now each game, three randomized major parks will be put up and it will tell you what the name of the park is, what state it's in, and it will tell you what you need to do to experience that park to get the points listed there. And as we take a closer look, you can see each of these parks has something written about it to learn about the park, and I think that's really cool. And in addition to actually being written on the cards, there's also some information about some of the national parks in the back of the rule book. But there'll also be other parks available to go to and experience throughout the game, and these ones are more like races because once somebody has been able to go and experience it and get the points, it will be removed and a new park will come out. But again, all of these are specific parks and it tells you where they are on the board. So for example, this hot springs here, Arkansas, you can see it's right here, but let's zoom out and show you the whole board. And here you can see it in perspective of the rest of the board and where everybody starts. So how would one visit Hot Springs and be able to experience it to get the five points? Because that's the main way of getting points in the game. And how you do that is you see what it actually needs. Here we need a tree and a campfire. To start the game, you're going to give this awesome first player marker of the bear to the last player that has visited a national park. Well, on a player's turn, you get to do two different actions, or you can do the same action twice. You're going to be drawing cards to help you move around and to help you claim park cards or occupy major parks. So let's first talk about drawing Trek cards. Now there's always going to be five face-up Trek cards that you can draw from, or you can draw randomly off the top of that deck. Now we wanted to get some trees and some campfire uh, in order to visit and experience the hot spring. So you could draw a card, you place it in your hand. By the way, everyone randomly gets two Trek cards to start the game. And that was one action. We actually just took one of our two actions and let's say we want to take the same action again. And for our second ac action, we draw that card there. And then this goes like this. And so then it would be the next player's turn. Now let's say all the other players have taken their turn, meaning they've taken two actions and it has come back to us. Let's say we're the red player. We want to try to get the hot springs to experience that because we have the cards and able to do so. So one of the things you can do on your turn is move. Now you see we are in the start space right now and you see all different places we can go from the start. We could go directly here. How you move is if you have a card uh, with the number that you want to move, uh, you can uh, discard that card and move that amount. When moving, only the number matters, not any of the icons on the card. So I could discard this and move one spot and move right there. However, maybe I didn't have a one. Maybe I had a three. Well, what I could do is I could go one, two, three, just like that. I normally wouldn't want to waste a card like that, but sometimes you might need to. Now at the end of your movement, you're going to pick up one of these stones if it happens to be in that spot. Now these stones are important because you'll place it in front of you and at the end of the game, each stone you have is going to be worth one point. But additionally, if you have the majority of that colored stone, you'll get a certain amount of points. The more stones there are of each of those colors, the higher the point value because it's harder to get a majority. So for red, for example, if I have the most, I'll get six points. Second most would get four points. So you're trying for majorities to get big points in the end, but also getting one point per stone. Now for my first action, I moved to Hot Springs 
And for our second action, we're going to try to claim a park card. Now, as you see, this needs a uh, tree and a campfire, and I have that. So what I could do is I could discard these out of the game into the discard pile and claim this. This is going to be worth five points in the end, and I would put this in front of myself. And then immediately, a new park card will come off the top of this deck. Ooh, look at that, Zion, one of my favorite parks, actually, in Utah. It needs a boot and a campfire. And as you see, the ones that are harder that require more, this one needs two mountains and two canoes, that one's going to be worth 10 points because it's harder to get. Now, a couple things on moving. Let's say this player wanted to go to Zion because that card just came up and they might have the cards in order to claim that park card. Now, we see moving here, it only would be one, two, three, four movements to get there. But in this game, you cannot cross through somebody. They actually block you from going past them. However, uh, you can bump somebody. Let's say I wanted to go directly to Zion. I would need one, two, three, four, five. So by having these people here, it's actually longer for me to go. But you can move as far as you want in one movement and use as many cards as you want, and you simply just add up the numbers. So here, because I have a three and a two, I could move a total of five and go one, two, three, four, five, and I would bump this player off. Remember, you can never go through anybody, but you can bump them off and that bumps them to start. It's not the end of the world because sometimes getting bumped back to start actually gets you closer to parks that you can actually claim a little bit later. And also notice I didn't pick up any of these stones because you only do that if you land and end your movement on a spot that has a stone. And of course if that player had the boot and the fire they'd be able to get Zion. But if they did not, they need to be careful because next turn this player might move one and bump them back and if they had the cards to be able to get Zion they would pretty much steal it from underneath them. Now we've talked about drawing cards, moving, claiming park cards. The last possible thing you can do is occupy one of these major parks. Now remember, three random ones are put out every game. Let's say this player's in the Grand Canyon and the Grand Canyon's here. Let's say that player, for an action, spends the two boots. Remember, whenever you're claiming uh, park cards or occupying a major park, the numbers don't matter, just the symbols. Two boots, two boots, we would discard that. This player would be able to put one of their colored tents, they are the red player, uh, here, this shows them at the end of the game, they're going to get five points. Now, unlike the park cards, these uh, major parks can be seen and visited and experienced by multiple players. As many players that actually go there and pay the requirements are able to put their tent there and get points for them in the end. However, each player that does this will get a specific ability depending on the card. For this one here, for the rest of the game, anytime you move, you can move one further than the numbers that you have discarded. Uh, for this one, for the rest of the game, anytime you claim a park card, you can immediately move one space away. And for this one, it's a one-time use that happens right when you get it, is you can swap a stone that you have with a stone that somebody else's has to try to get the uh, majority in a certain color. And this will continue, each player taking two actions on their turn until either one player has collected five park cards or until the last stone has been collected off the map. You'd finish off that round and then go to final scoring where every player will count up all the points on all of the park cards they've collected. They'll get one point for each of the stones they have. And then you'll see if you get any of these for having majorities of the different stone colors. In a two player game, you use just most. Otherwise, first and second place uh, can get those rewards as long as they have at least one stone of the color. And then each player will get points if for every one of these major parks that they were able to visit throughout the game, denoted by their tents. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Well, there you have Trekking the National Parks 2nd Edition. Now, I had reviewed the original 1st Edition in the past, and even back then I gave the game a very high rating of 9 out of 10, and I loved how I could play it with casual gamers like my wife, but could also enjoy it with gamer enthusiast friends as well. Underdog Games has done a great job streamlining the game, making it even easier to learn than before, but still adding more depth to it, and that's a hard thing to do. This new updated version is available now, and I've placed a link below me in the description of this video where you can purchase the game. This has been the Game Boy Geek, helping you find and enjoy the next board game you'll love.